Traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. As you're tuning in, hit that thumbs up button. And if you are a new viewer, consider subscribing to the channel. Guys, today was one of the worst days of my day trading career. Uh, it, it's pretty unfortunate. I'm very disappointed with this day and the events of how things played out. And I'm really at my wit's end with my broker, especially when it comes to technical difficulties, lag in executions, and other technical things that's out of my control, but is in the control of the broker, Thinkorswim TD Ameritrade. Today, you know, started off good. It started off well, just like any other day. And, uh, you know, I, I encounter lag. You know, it's, it's to the point where it's like becoming too normal. And here comes the madness. Long what's happening here i'm not being filled i'm not being filled i'm not being filled so i'm going to just throw out a sell order just to try to cover my ass because sometimes if you don't execute the trades they'll tell you hey there's nothing we can do for you you know and for them it's just business the stock may go all the way down a dollar a share and they'll say hey you have to cover it now and take this loss you know so this is what's happening and you know, if we look at the time, it's 10, 19 a.m. Uh, you know, it's just disappointing, man. It's going to last a few minutes. You can see here a little later, I, I'm going to reduce the one share size on stock PFRG. It's still the case. You know, this, this should really and truly never happen. And I believe I'm going to try it again here at some point. I want to... Okay, yeah, here we go. So this is now... 10 minutes late what was that 10 19 if i if i come back here for you guys to see the time it's now 10 33 a.m all right and so it's been over 10 minutes of lag in the platform you know i try it again with one share and i think this is what really discouraged me from continuing to trade on the day is that you know the lag isn't going away it wasn't a quick fix they weren't able to get things under control and the last time we saw this it seemed like it was a, a few hours of lag, you know, I believe the last time it happened. So, you know, and, and then I've gotten caught in trades before where my internet went out and my power went out and it's a terrible feeling, man. You know, if, if your data on your phone, if your backup internet is not working or is off, it's a terrible feeling. You're essentially at the mercy of the ocean, the mercy of the seas, the mercy of the markets. And, the markets are merciless and so i like to have control right i like to have control over my risk and when things like this you know are, are happening i have zero control and so i made the decision to walk away from the day um, and so you know there's there's always two sides to every story right you know it, it's similar to what happened a few days ago where i opted to not take those couple of trades and missed out on a, let's say, $500 gain or maybe even more, right? Because I thought I could have done really well on that day as well. So, you know, it's like within these two days, Thinkorswim has already cost me, if, if, if I'm to throw out a number, I'm, and I'm going to be very conservative. I'm not, I'm not even going to go crazy. Thinkorswim cost me at least 3 k over these two days of, of technical issues. Not to mention the countless is, you know, issues with DAS in, in the open, right? So, you know, solutions, solutions are, uh, in this particular type of situation, be patient, wait for the lag to go away and, you know, get confirmation, whether from this community or other communities in, or in and around YouTube, where we're all able to trade again, because, you know, people will say, okay, hey, it's working. And, and they did today. Some people said, hey, I think it's working again. It seems that the orders are coming in and out, you know? But relentless trader being so disciplined, and sometimes I wonder if the discipline gets in the way. You know, it's crazy that, I, that I'm even saying something like this, right? Because, you know, is it the FOMO talking? You know, is it the FOMO? All I want to do is be able to trade and trade without issues, right? So, you know, getting back to the solutions, you know, and I spoke to Marcelo, he made a good point. It's like, hey, RT, you know, next time you can, you know, maybe be patient for that lag to go away wait for that confirmation and then maybe start off with small size again 10 shares 50 shares 500 shares whatever it might be to regain 
that connection and, and become comfortable with just putting out orders again, you know? So, you know, that's something I could have done and that could have gotten me back into the groove and gotten me back into, you know, getting into trades and, and you know, finishing up the day pretty well. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing, the other solution is to, of course, open up another platform that has no connection to Thinkorswim, something completely different, preferably a direct direct access routing platform, uh, which will, uh, which will, you know, allow me to trade and then have better executions, especially in these situations. I might not want to trade every single trade there because we don't want to be paying too much in commissions, but especially for the open and these type of laggy areas on Thinkorswim, we can switch over and, and, and be able to, you know, uh, to, 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 to continue to trade. So, you know, this recap, the, the, the main topics, you know, broker issues, te technical difficulties, and FOMO. You know, how, how to combat FOMO and, and how to try to stay disciplined. You know, and it's similar to the, last, to the last couple of days where I don't think what I did was necessarily wrong, but it just, it really just does suck, man, because I'm very capable I'm competent. I have everything I need in terms of my risk management and the skills to be able to have today be, you know, and again, I'm going to be so conservative. What I think I could have done, I'm not even going to say. I'll, I'll say a, a humble, a humble 1K. It, it, you know, it's like being robbed, man. It, it just doesn't feel good. It just does not feel good. Uh, but, you know, I'm relentless. I'll continue to be disciplined. Uh, and, you know, Marcelo, he made another good point to me. You know, we spoke, he, he said, you know, regardless of if today was a 1K day, 2K day, you know, we still have to have that marathon mindset and understand that even that amount of money wouldn't have really been life changing. You know, it's, it's not like I missed out on a on 10 million, uh, but still we, we both did say, yeah, it's, it does suck because, you know, it's better to have the, the gains and, 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 you know, the feeling of accomplishment really too, right? Because we know how it is mentally. Trading is not easy mentally. It's mental warfare. It, it, it plays on our psyche. It's difficult. And, you know, heading into the weekend, you know, all we want to do each, each and every day is trade. You head in, you're coming into Friday, the last day, trying to close out the week strong. And, you know, we're highly competitive people. And this is how the day takes a turn. All right, let's get into the actual technicals of today's recap. You know, I did start very green. So I, I had a, a $900 swing on SAI. I was green 500. Let's see. SAI. I was green 500 somewhere in here. Actually, we got to go back some more. We already had the loss. This was a tricky stock SAI. So I'm watching for one minute candle, right? The one minute candle to make the new high over 30 and I have starter size right here you know my my full size on this stock will be around 2900 right the other stocks that are a little cheaper and moving slower I want to do about 35 3700 and I want to buy twice three times so I'm in actually 9000 but for this particular stock SI excuse, excuse me SAI SAI uh one entry in and out and I'm not looking to add a because I understand the risk to the downside with how the spreads and, and the bits are evaporating. All right. So watch right here. I'm in at 29. This is a good, this is a good trade. You know, we're selling into the spreads nicely done. And right here is where I do, you know, I, I, I made a mistake here. I'm going to miss this dip. Watch this, watch this right here, right here. Previous high for that break was 30. It goes to 50. It pulls back to that same price range. I need it to be in here. I'm going to I'm going to be a little slow. I'm going to be a little slow. And this should this shouldn't happen, but it happened. You know, sometimes it does. And I'm gonna buy this very late here. Very late. You know, you can see basically one and a half seconds, and it's back at 48. I missed my entry 30, and I'm gonna get filled high right here. I'm gonna have to stop out for a loss. Or, or let's say scratch stopped out scratch that was not good because it messed up the sequence here for me to now get back in with more confidence over that level of 50. 
So I'm back in. I'm not as green as I would have wanted to be already because I missed that trade, but I'm still trying, still trying to put out some orders to see how this thing wants to do. And right here is where it really takes off. It dips. I'm going to take the dip at 50. That's how fast I need it to be last time. I'm in at 63. I'm out above 90. And, you know, here's where I'm going to give back the gains. We get a high. And this, and this is a good attempt right here. I'm in high, but it's a good attempt. I mean, when, they're so volatile and spready. But when the stocks are uptrending, regardless of how volatile they are, when they're uptrending, I can make money. It's the, it's the drops is what, you know, what I got to be careful of. So right here, I'm going to watch to see if it's going to hold above 7. So watch this. There's 707 by 16. It's going to come down some more. 03 on the bids. I'm like, okay, that's good enough for me to take this long. It holds. I'm in. But I expected an immediate bounce back over 715. And it's going to linger here to 7 again. I'm like, you know what? Let's cut it because we can flush down below 7, back to 680. We don't want to take a full 20, 30 cent loss. Let's cut this scratch or for a 10 cent loss. It bounces back up so fast that I essentially get a chance to get out uh, break even. But I was prepared to take that 10, 15 cent loss. And so right here, I ended up missing this particular trade uh, and it went without me. So I, I, I needed to be in at 10, out at 30 right there. It's back down. And right here, I thought this is a great entry. Thought this was a great entry. This is what's going to do me in for a 50 cent loss, or let's say like 35 cent loss. I'm buying, and it's 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 not going to stop dropping here. Boom, selling at around 33. I'm out. It's still big in the spreads here, but at this point, I kind of realized like, yeah, it's struggling. And so we did pull back some more before it curled. On this trade right here, I realized that the curl is looking good. And I'm looking at the 5-minute volume profile as well. And I, I, I like what I'm seeing. I don't like that we're still below high of day in that big wick. But I attempted to buy towards a low of 80, 85, I believe, here. But I took it at 94. And I mentioned to the stream, I'm going to take it high. And I was banking on it holding high and then curling up. But that wasn't the smartest thing to do, being that the day already showed to me that, you know, they showed me that the pullbacks are exaggerated. So this trade here is a simple trade of me needing to be more patient and being more aware and recognizing that, hey, the dips are huge, wait. Because what it's going to do, it's going to come down here to 70 right so we we essentially 80 was support in this area we essentially broke down right low on this red candle here was 70 and then low was 72 so two bottoming wicks and if i had waited for a break of 80 to then get long i would have been able to hold this trade all the way through six dollars selling at 620 or so so watch the curl here we go and you see how fast it's literally just 30 seconds so let's say I'm in at 78 right here, 77. It doesn't have to be 70 exactly. If I'm in 78, can we see the break of six? There's some good green. Can we continue here? Nice. There's 10. Maybe I would have sold right there, 97. It's holding the whole dollar. That's a great area to get back in. And boom, 30 on the ask. If I'm selling 25, another great scalp. And just like that, you know, or rack up 500 or maybe maybe not as much because the share size would have been smaller uh, but you know we're back up maybe 300 because that would have been a huge uh gain there so you know it's 650 and instead you know i missed the trade i'm kind of on my heels and uh you know that drop of course as we just saw where it drops down to six is what's going to do me in uh, and put me red so you know if, if things went really well um if things went really well i think uh you know we probably could have ended up one one k and then we have the loss maybe up 500 but you know it, this is all good this is a part of the deal but again the lag is what really got got to us and messed up the day uh when it comes to pt pi and us doing really well 
on this stock. And by the way, I would encourage you guys to check out this portion of the live stream where I did call out an excellent trade. This particular, so at this time, and let's, let's come out of here really quickly so we can get a, a, a more context. This five minute setup here, uh, we're here already. Let's see. The first five minute pullback down here, I mentioned that I felt like I would have took a loss because I would have bought it too high. Great move. So we went from two, and context is so important, man. We went from two, let's say two dollars over view up two ten, to a high of three twenty six, a dollar and sixteen cents a share. From three twenty six, we pulled back to a low of two sixty six, which is about fifty cents. You know, it's fifty cents reasonable for a dollar sixty a uh, dollar. 15 cent move you know a little so so right vwap is all the way down here at uh 36 at this particular point in time which i thought might have been a little too low and so i initially thought 66 was a decent entry and i believe i was watching 75 for a potential trade and, and at this point because of the lag of course i'm you know i'm like just mentally trading it watching on hypothetical trades thinking where i would buy where i would sell if i'm watching the stock right here we take uh we take a loss because it does break down and right here the curl back up was really good and this five minute pullback is the one that i dominated to the t or let's say i would have dominated to the t had i been trading and would have for sure even despite taking a loss here uh, because you know 500 shares blocks only we'd lost about 75 80 dollars on about 17 cents of loss at towards our stop we for sure would have made back all the money in this one trade here because the way how this played out the way how this played out i read it so well breakdown of 90 right here i i said hey right here is my buy 1200 shares let's see what it does curling back up and i would have been holding shares all the way uh to i believe three what was the high day 370 three, 326 hold on no 350 was highs and i said hey we should at least see 370 out of this maybe it goes to four and so you know uh i think we would have at least made back a good amount of money on this and once the scalping started again up here of course again anything uptrending i can make money on especially this price range uh, man you know it went all the way to eight nice baby pullbacks bottoming wicks and just climbing stair stepping up at least we would have ended something in the green man uh, but you know that's the day longer recap here going over everything again there are always solutions to our problems so you know depending on how it, how it goes you know and i'm never really upset for doing the right thing it, it's just frustrating it's just frustrating to not be able to do what you love to do you know, regardless of if it's technical issues, mental issues, you know, it, it's different when you're trying to figure it out, when you're trying to learn how to trade, you're trying to get to the other side, but when you're already on the other side and consistent, you know, it, it's, 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 it's usually smooth and it seems like, you know, things are just getting in the way at times, you know, life, I guess, but you know, that it's why we'll, we'll always be relentless is because we'll keep going no matter what. We're going to stay locked in, stay focused, stay dialed, and we're going to always uh, do what's in our best interest. All right, guys, so stay safe, stay green. I am, of course, signing out.